we are not working here from theory where we really our theories are the weakest part of what we say what we're working from is the fact of an experience which we need to make sense of now let's most of these other oriented experiences which are hard to keep track of or make sense of cannot be commanded freely they're more in the realm of you know you're traveling in a foreign country and you contract a terrific fever and you fall into a vision and you have deep awareness and realization about the nature of life this is not an experience that can ever be repeated or uh, you're alone in a wilderness and you confront uh, a flying object in the sky which seems to trigger strange bursts of thought in yourself this cannot be repeated and triggered on command so only in the context of the psychedelic experience and the willed decision to act can you enter this arena of repeatedly uh, going to meet the experience of the other and uh, it is a very very bizarre enterprise it is not that if we do it enough times we will understand it or become comfortable with it because it is not in its nature to be understood and it is not in its nature to accommodate itself to us rather it's that we've discovered another dimension almost in the same way that uh, Europeans discovered another world only 500 years ago in 1992 we will celebrate the 500th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of America now notice that when Columbus set out from Spain uh, uh, there was a large body of intelligent opinion which believed that he was sailing over the edge of the world literally that he was sailing out of mind and instead what what lay at the end of that voyage was real estate <laughs> immense amounts of real estate and we have come to terms with that and in fact now inhabit what 500 years ago was not even on the maps it was in the unconscious now it is the center of the global economy in the same way that these European uh, navigators began to have this intimation that the world was a wraparound that's what it means to say that the world is round it means you can get back to where you started from by going away continuously in the same way that the European navigators discovered that the world was a wraparound I think we are on the brink of discovering that you can start in three-dimensional space and time move off in a linguistic vehicle and find your way back to the place you left from this means that what we call three-dimensional space and what we call the imagination actually have a contiguous and continuous transformation from one into the other and this is big news this entirely goes against our Cartesian expectation that thoughts inside world outside objects outside perceptions inside and this is actually nothing more this inside outside thing than an artifact of European languages and yet we take it to be uh, you know how God made the world basically because we are so embedded in our language that we cannot literally we cannot uh, cognize reality without it we cannot cognize reality without our language but then in the psychedelic state somehow this happens somehow syntax is replaced by hypersyntax 
uh, linguistically moderated and modulated perception is replaced by perception in the raw, not uh, coded and sculpted and sifted for culturally validated meaning, but rather just the full hit. Well, this is tremendously disorienting, but it's also tremendously liberating because that's the full deck. That's when you have full command of the options available within the matrix. If you play the cultural game, it's like playing only with clubs or something, or playing only with the red marked cards. You have to play with a full deck, and that includes this pre-linguistic uh, surround in which we are embedded. Now, why is it so emotionally charged for us? In other words, why can the shamans go into this dimension uh, and heal or, or divine, see into the future, or in a sense see into the past by discovering who stole whose cow or who's sleeping with who or all these things that shamans are concerned with? What is this uh, ground of being that we discover by uh, dissolving the cultural machinery of <coughs> cognition? Well, I think what it is, is simply uh, reality unpackaged for a historical epoch. In other words, uh, reality uncompromised um, by the need to be culturally efficacious and useful. And this is precisely what we need to throw light on our culture crisis because the models that we have used to sanction information that is culturally useful have given us information which is toxic. I mean, we have actually created a, a toxic relationship between ourselves and nature. We have pursued avenues of questioning the feedback from which have given us an overpopulated, polluted, ideology, obsessed, uh, uh, unresponsive planet.